Hi everyone, it's me, Lindsay, with Equip Me OT, here today to talk about safe sleep when using a recliner. So for a lot of people, a recliner is the most comfortable position to sleep, whether that's long term or during a surgical recovery or injury recovery. So I wanted to cover some ways that I try to help people stay as posturally supported for their sleep in the recliner. So through this video, I'm going to cover several different uh, positioning aids that you can use to make this safer. And again, this is for people who are going to be sleeping in the recliner, whether that's just for a few weeks or perhaps for a prolonged period of time. So stick around and hopefully you'll find some information that'll really help you out. So let's get started. So here I am in the recline position. This is an electric recliner, so it has push button controls. It goes relatively flat. I'm positioned in probably a typical reclined position that you'd find for most recliners. And I'm gonna go from the head down and kind of talk about the different things you can do to correct potential postural issues that would um, arise from sleeping in this position long term. So let's start at the head and neck. One thing that's very important is I see a lot of folks add a pillow behind their head. And while this may provide a little bit of comfort, this pushes the head very far forward and can begin to cause a lot of neck trouble. So if you are considering putting a, a pillow behind your head, make sure it's a very thin pillow and it's not pushing the head too far forward. If your chin is significantly ahead of your chest, it is too far forward and over time it's going to cause a lot of neck issues. Another thing I recommend for a lot of people is to add a neck roll. And whether that's using a towel just simply rolled up, this is just a hand towel, um, rolled to whatever really is comfortable behind the curvature of the neck to kind of give it its natural curve or a lot of folks will find the most comfortable thing is a travel pillow so something that wraps all the way around and prevents you from accidentally sleeping too far in one direction which can cause really uncomfortable neck pain. So those types of things are going to make a big difference in preventing neck issues. So wanting to keep that curvature of the spine is definitely a theme you're going to see throughout the positioning using this type of chair. Okay, so let's talk about shoulders, elbows, and hand positioning. So a lot of people think they're all set with these armrests, but I will warn you that over time, the pressure on the elbows and the backs of the arms and really the position of the shoulders can be problematic. So I recommend using some pillows to create a more supportive space when you sleep in the recliner on your back like this. So I like two pillows in this situation. They don't have to be overly fluffy, but something like this, one under each arm, kind of elevating the arms into a more over the body position like this. By doing this, it's going to get the pressure off the elbows, allowing the elbows to be kind of floated above instead of pressing down into the recliner. It takes the pressure off the elbow nerves. And then it's going to put the shoulders in a little bit lighter position. It's gonna pull them off the chair a little bit instead of pressing so hard into it. This is just generally a more ergonomic position for long-term sleep. And I find that a lot of people are significantly more comfortable in this kind of setup. Okay, so now let's go into the lower back. This is a hugely important area to attend to because one of the biggest issues with sleeping in a recliner is losing the curvature of your lower back. There's a lot of pressure being placed directly into your sacrum or tailbone in a recliner because of uh, gravity pressing down. You're not laying completely flat, and so therefore that area is receiving constant pressure. So it's really important you attend to that when you're sleeping in a recliner. I do recommend adding lumbar support. Now that can come in a lot of different forms. Some people will use a small pillow. Um, I like a towel roll because it's really easy to set up and you can adjust it for size and width so it's most comfortable for you. You can also use a purchased lumbar support that would be found in a um, usually uh, office chairs and things like that. So what I would recommend is that if you can't tolerate lumbar support all the time, at least have it in place some of the time. So simply having a lumbar support behind the lower back, like this, to kind of push that lower back into a more natural curve is going to give you a really important stretch so that when you're laying back like this, it's going to be more similar to what you would experience if you were laying flat in bed, really kind of stretching out that arch and giving you a better long-term supported position. And again, even if this is only for naps or resting periods, if you can't tolerate it for all night sleep, it's going to benefit you in the long run. Okay, so now let's move down to hips, knees, and legs. So let's talk about the lower half of the body. So we've supported the back, now let's support these legs. 
One very important consideration is depending on the type of recliner you're using, the gap between the footrest and the seat may be problematic. This one has a very supportive um, pillow between the two, which gives an excellent support consistently between the back of the leg, kind of right, below, right above the knee, to the calf. What I find is a lot of recliners don't have this support. And when you don't have this support, it can create a really problematic area for collection of fluid. So what I have is a lot of people complaining of really stiff knee joints when they go to get up from their recliner having been reclined for a number of hours. And the reason for that is because gravity is allowing a pooling of fluid behind the knees. So then when you go to stand, that fluid is very tight in there and it makes it very dangerous and difficult to move. So I highly recommend if your recliner does not have a supportive cushion between the footrest and the seat that you add a pillow. This is so, so important and will prevent a lot of discomfort over time. So this one has it, so I don't have to make an adjustment to it, but know that if yours doesn't, try to find a pillow or even a blanket that's rolled up or folded to fill that space so that you don't have a gap between your calf and your um, back of your leg. That will make a huge difference. Another thing to consider is most recliners aren't going to get your legs above the height of your heart. So there's a few recliners that do have this option that can get you in a fully elevated position to help manage lower level, lower extremity swelling or edema. And if yours does not have that, I strongly recommend adding a pillow under the feet every so often to get the legs elevated. The secondary reason for that is to get pressure off the heels. So common locations for wound development for individuals who sleep in recliners is the backs of the heels, the sacrum or tailbone, and the back of the head. These are three points that you're going to have a lot of pressure. So to remove that pressure is when you add the extra supports around it. So for the feet, what I would do is find a pillow. It doesn't have to be an extremely thick pillow again. And you're going to want to rest the pillow just behind the calves or just behind the heels. So what I'm doing is something called floating the heels. So the heels are now elevated and floating on air, so there's nothing underneath them. And by doing this, it's going to both elevate the legs to allow the swelling to come back so you don't end up with big swollen feet, and it's going to allow the pressure to come off the heels so that you reduce the risk of pressure sores or even pressure points or sore spots. So this is how I would recommend positioning the lower legs. So with all of that said, the combination of pillows, elevating the feet, supporting the lumbar, supporting the neck, when you do all of these things appropriately and consistently, you can safely sleep in a recliner for extended periods of time. So I hope you got some value out of this video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. And as always, if you need more information on how to stay safe and independent in your home and community, consider subscribing to Equip Me OT. Thank you.